So if you didn't get that in our prayer, uh, I'm not talking change, like just a little change. I'm talking <coughs> change. That's what he gave me while we were praying. <coughs> change. <laughs> okay? It's and, and it's not comfortable. Transition is not comfortable. Okay? We've, we've all experienced. We women have all experienced transition. It's intense. It's short. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's intense, but it's short. And it means there's a change. And something's about to be renewed. Or brought. There's already life. You, you see, that's the thing about birth. There's already life. It's just a different circumstance now. It's a different reality now. Okay? So we bring forth a life that's already existing into an existence they hadn't haven't experienced yet okay so it's that kind of change and I'm the biggest one to drag her feet and go ee! no <laughs> right so okay that was good <coughs> amen end of the day so um, I want to I just want to point out a couple things from last time and then get us to where I think he wants us to go today which plays beautifully with the songs we sang and what you just shared. So here we go. So real quickly, I'm just going to read a couple verses. You're fine. In Numbers, Adonai said to Aaron, we've already gone through this. I just want to, I just want to point this out. You are not to have any inheritance or portion in their land. I am your portion and inheritance among the people of Israel. So Number what inheritance? 18. Numbers 18. Numbers 18, 20. Um, so the question I have here is, what inheritance are you seeking? That was, that was what, are we, are we truly, because see this chapter 18 is about the, the Levitical line and the priesthood, not just the, pre, you know, that's the Levitical line. So when he says we're going to be a kingdom of priests later, we read that last week in Peter, right? First Peter, then, then, this chapter's for us, okay? This chapter's for us. So what inheritance are we seeking? Something to think about, you know? What do I want? I received nothing when my earthly father died. I got nothing of his. Nothing. But you got the most important thing. But I got the most important thing. I had. A spiritual heritage from him and I had the blessing okay he gave me he he did he spoke over me he did give me the blessing mm -hmm. he did speak out my gift mm -hmm. that is worth far more than anything Material. somebody else would have chosen to give me of his okay can't take that away so what I'm saying. So hold on to the things that can't be taken away. Everything can be taken away. Everything in this house can be this house, this property, cars, everything can be taken away. My own life can be taken away. But what can't be taken away is my spirit and my soul. Mm -hmm. And what I possess and whose I am. That cannot be taken away. Mm -hmm. So what inheritance are you seeking? Going out of Numbers 18, he's talking to the, to the Levites. He's also talking about being holy and separating and how God provides. And then that's when he goes into Numbers 19, which is the red heifer. Okay? So it's along the lines of purifying because back in 17, the people go, oh, no, 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 we can't get close to the to the, to the the tabernacle. We can't get close because we'll die. And so he put the Levites around them. Remember? He put the Levites around the tabernacle to protect, to be a buffer. And so then he instituted this the red heifer for purification so the people can be pure, okay, can be purified, all right? You, you see, it's all, it, it all has to do with our spiritual condition, mm -hmm. okay? So that's Numbers 19, and I'm not going to go into great details in Numbers 19, Red Heifer, because we've done a teaching on that, a really long teaching on that, mm -hmm. but there are some things that need to be pointed out, okay? So let me start chapter 19, uh, verse 1, Adonai said to Moshe and Aaron, this is the regulation from the Torah which Adonai has commanded. Tell the people of Israel to bring you a young red female cow. That's a red heifer. 
A heifer is a young female cow without no fault, no defect, right? No fault, no defect. Okay, that's number one. One that has never borne a yoke, has never borne a burden of, of, of work upon them, right? Okay. Um, you are to give it to Eleazar the Cohen. Now, this is numbers. When Eleazar dies, that means you don't do the red heifer anymore? No, it says the Cohen. Okay, the priest. All right. Um, it is to be brought outside the camp. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. It is to be slaughtered in front of the priest. Mm -hmm. And the blood is to be sprinkled facing towards the front of the tent of meeting. Now, this is the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, not the temple. Okay? Sprinkle the blood seven times. Is that a, that's a number. That's a very important number. It is to be, be burned. That means everything is consumed. The skin, the meat, the blood, and the dung. Everything. The Cohen will throw onto the heifer as it is being burned. Cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet yarn. Okay, and again, we all know all of those things with Yeshua was without fault and without defect. He never bore a yoke of the, of, of mm -hmm. okay? He was brought before the priests. Yeah, he was. He was outside the camp. Yeah, he was. He was hung outside the camp. He was slaughtered in front of the priests. Were they not there? But, oh, if you're God, I'm down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it in front of the tent of meat? Well, it was in front of the then temple. So that's why I believe it had to have been on the Mount of Olives somewhere. Had to have been a crosswind because it wouldn't have been down in the Valley of Kidron. They would have been unclean. Mm -hmm. And remember that throughout the red heifer is to purify. And yet whoever slaughters the red heifer the pure without fault and defect becomes unclean till evening the one who burns is unclean until evening the one who gathers the ashes is unclean until evening mm -hmm. the thing that makes you pure mm -hmm. mm. the roman soldiers the pre they were all unclean mm -hmm. they all had their part and then the cedar wood the hyssop so I believe the cedar, I believe it was the cedar from Lebanon. I believe that was the, the stakes that they used. I mean, it's the wood that's going to, you think we're almost going to constantly want to be cutting down trees, you know. No, they want something that's going to last. Cedar. Hyssop. Scarlet yarn. It's all present. It's all present with Yeshua at his death. So, okay. So that's where the context of the red heifer comes in, right here. So this is that, I think we're at, what, year two here in the wanderings of the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. Year two. Okay. So now let's go to Numbers chapter 20. This is where I want to go. The people of Israel, verse one, the whole community entered the Zen desert in the first month. This is now, we just did a time, we just did a huge jump. So what happened between year two and year 40? Uh -huh. Did Moses just kick back, not have to do anything else? I don't think so. I think he still still was doing they were they were wandering there's a place you know there's another chapter coming up that tells you every place that they went where they stopped how they moved so they're actively doing stuff but we don't have an account okay we have an account of the first two they're going yeah they're going to they're wandering they're wandering so we've got the first two years gives us a lot of details we need to learn from and then the last year there's a lot of detail in this last year Okay, so that's where we're at. <clears throat> there Miriam died, and there she was buried. Verse 2, because the community had no water, here we go again, they assembled themselves against Moshe and Aaron. The people quarreled with Moshe, and they said, we wish we, oh, come on, seriously. Well, we don't have any grumbling or complaining for 38 years. That doesn't mean there wasn't any, but it doesn't mean there was. We don't know. You know, because when we go, when, when things are, okay, this is what we do. We set up camp. We set down camp. We set up camp. So things are pretty much the same for 38 years. Mm -hmm. Pretty much in a routine. We This goes. We do this. This is what we do. Right? Now things are changing again. See change? We don't like change. 
Okay. So now the next generation. We wish we had died when our brothers died before Adonai. Oh, I'm going to go back to, you know, previous. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why did you bring Adonai's community into the desert? Well, at least this time, they're, they're complaining to Moses, but now they're at least saying, why did you bring God's community, Adonai's community? There's a little bit of a difference. To die there, we and our livestock. Why did you make us leave Egypt? You know, some of these people weren't even born in Egypt. Just saying. To bring us to this terrible place without seed, without figs, without grapevines, without pomegranates. We don't even have water to drink. And Moshe and Aaron left the assembly, went to the entrance of the tent of meeting. And what did they do? What they always do. They fell on their faces. Right? Mm -hmm. They fell on their faces to intercede for this ungrateful people. And the glory of Adonai appeared to them. And then Adonai said to Moshe, take the staff. Okay, that, this is always... This is always, you know, I've always wondered, well, why did he tell, why did he tell him to take the staff? <clears throat> take the staff, assemble the community, you and Aaron, your brother, and before their eyes, tell, speak to the rock to produce its water. And you will bring them water out of the rock and thus enable the community and their livestock to drink. So Moshe took the staff from the presence of Adonai. Remember, it was in the tent before the testimony. That's where God told him to put it, as he had ordered him. But after Moshe and Aaron had assembled the community in front of the rock, he said to them, listen here, you rebels. You see, there's an exclamation point. So Moses is, he's old. He's 120. Okay. Are we supposed to bring you water from this rock? And then Moshe raised his hand and he hit the rock twice. Could you not just hear heaven go? <gasps> I can. I can. I can hear all of heaven go. <gasps> the angels heard all. Okay. I just did that. I was like, "Yep." Oh, you're gonna get it. Yep. <laughs> and 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 tears because this wasn't some light little thing. This was not, so I would always, I've always wondered, why did you tell him to take the staff? Why didn't you just tell him just to go and to talk to it? Why was he supposed to take the staff? I'm going to show you why. Jump back to number 17. Because we hit it lightly, so I really want you to understand this. Number 17, verse 16, in the complete Jewish Bible, it's, 17, 1 in another version. Adonai said to Moshe, Speak to the people of Israel and take from them staffs, one for each ancestral tribe and one from each leader of a tribe, 12 staffs. Write each man's name on his staff. And write Aaron's name on the staff of Levi. For each tribe leader is to have one staff. So how many are there? There's going to be 12, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All 12 are chosen. All 12 are significant. All 12 are important. Okay, I, 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 we need to understand that even in the disciples, there, there were 70, there were 300, there were thousands, and then 300, and then 120 that were close, and then the women that were close, and then there were 12, and then there were three. You, you, you follow me? Okay. Verse 19. Put them in the tent of meeting in front of the testimony where I meet with you. He's talking to Moshe. Moshe is unique because no one could go into the tent of the meeting except for the priests, not even the Levites, till everything's covered up to move things, right? It, it, it just, so Moshe is unique. The staff of the man I'm going to choose will sprout buds. In this way, I will put a stop to the complaints that people of Israel keep making against you. So this staff, is whoever God chooses, this is my man. This is, this is the tribe. This is who I'm going to speak through. Okay? <clears throat> Moshe spoke to the people of Israel and all their leaders gave him staffs, one for each leader, according to their ancestral tribes, 12 staffs. Aaron's staff was among them. 
Moshe put the staves before the Adonai in the tent of testimony. The next day, Moshe went into the tent of testimony, and there he saw that Aaron's staff for the house of Levi had budded. Not only did it bud, it had sprouted buds, flowers, ripe almonds. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's a threefold witness here. This is the staff I chose, and Aaron's name is on it. And Moshe brought out all the staffs from before Adonai to all the people of Israel, and they looked, and each man took back his staff. And Adonai said to Moshe, Return Aaron's staff to its place in front of the testimony. It is to be kept there as a sign to the rebels. And I thought, well, how are the rebels going to know? It's the sign of testimony. Well, because Moses, go get the staff. Because it's a sign to the rebels. Were they just not complaining and murmuring? And Was it not a sign? This is the authority? This is who God's going to speak through? That's why he was to take the staff. Because he's got Aaron's staff, and God is using his mouth, and he says, speak to it. Everything was written here for a reason, for a purpose. God has a plan, and God has a purpose, even if it makes no sense to me. So, return Aaron's staff to his place in front of the testimony to be kept there as a sign to the rebels so that they will stop grumbling against me and thus not die. Now go back to 20. Then Moshe raised his hand and hit the rock twice with his staff. Verse 11. Water flowed out in abundance and the community and their livestock drank. So if Moses didn't do it right, why did the water come out of the rock? He's still God's anointed. Mm -hmm. I'm still a teacher. Right or wrong. Mm -hmm. God's, still God. God's still God. You know, I mean, Joseph told this, uh, Joshua tells the son to stand still. Did he ask God? No, but he was God's anointed and God's, okay, my, I'm on you. Okay, you said it. I'm, it's like, you know, it's like a, a, a child. When a child says, oh, my dad will do blah, blah, blah. You don't think my dad wasn't going to stand behind me and do what I said he was going to do? Yeah. Yeah. God is still God. And his power is still his power. And his anointing is still his anointed, right or wrong. But there are consequences. And Verse 12. Are humans are flawed. Humans are flawed. But that was the purpose of the staff. It wasn't to tempt Moses to do wrong. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, well, why did he even have him take it if he didn't want him to use it? Well, it had a purpose. Mm -hmm. It was a testimony. It was a witness. Mm -hmm. Speak to the rock. Tell the rock. Don't yell at it. Tell the rock. Tell the rock. You know, um, as a little girl growing up in a certain denomination, the louder they got, mm -hmm. the more the spirit. <laughs> no. Nowhere does it say yell. Verse 12. But Adonai, Adonai said to Moshe and Aaron, because you did not trust in me, Because you did not trust in me. Did Moses not trust God? How many times did Moses lay out and go, No, God, if you're not going, I'm not. Blot my name. Didn't he at one point say, Blot my name out? He did. If you're not going to go with this, just blot my name out. I'm going to know Moses. I'm going to start a new, a new people through you. No, no, just, just blot me out. If you're not going to save your people with your name with your power, what you said you were going to do and your reputation. Wow. So we could easily say, because you didn't trust me in this, right? You know, I can have great faith to do many, 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 many things. And then I come across something. I'm like, oh, we do it. We're human. We do it. We just do. Because you did not trust me. 
so as to cause me to be regarded as holy by the people of Israel. Okay, I told you to speak. I wanted you to speak. I wanted the people to hear the spoken word. You had the authority. You had the witness. I wanted you to speak to the rock. So that the word was regarded as holy. There's so much in here. This is so rich and so easy I, to miss. I understand Moses, though. Oh, yeah. You know, because yeah. it's like when you, you told your kids, over and over and over again to do this or do that. And they still. You're exasperated. So, yeah, I get him. <laughs> We're exasperated. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, so see, yeah, you see, it's really, really, really easy to sit here mm -hmm. and to look back and judge Moses. Oh, please don't judge Moses. No. Don't. Uh. So he was probably angry, and that's why he hit Oh, that. sure he was Just, angry. Yeah. There's an explanation Just point there. I'm, tired, I'm sick and tired of you sniveling, snotty, complaining, Why's murmuring little babies? burger brats. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I, you know. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. Exasperation is, a, is, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's human. <clears throat> Absolutely. But it grieves me that Moses, 120 years old, mm -hmm. he had encounters with God. Mm -hmm. He had experiences with God. Mm -hmm. He spoke with God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Because you did not trust in me, so as to cause me to be regarded as holy by the people of Israel. Don't think that what you do, oh, I, just, I messed up, nobody will know. Everything you do matters. Everything you do, somebody's watching. Mm -hmm. I, I've said this, well, I don't know if I've said it in this group, but I've said it many times before. There was a point in my life where the entire neighborhood turned against my household. That was so much fun, having three little ones, two little ones. Even so much so that they wouldn't let their kids play with my kids, which was, you know, hard on the kids. And years later, one of them said, I used to watch you through the knot holes of the fence when you were in your backyard. And you didn't even yell at the dog. You, you were the same there and you didn't think anybody was watching and looking as you were anywhere else. Whew. Thank you, Mom. I could have marred my entire witness when I would have thought nobody was looking. Mm -hmm. But I was who I was. I am. Be, be genuine from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. Let him change you from the inside out. Be the same person in your room quite when nobody's there as you are out in public. Mm -hmm. It matters what you do. It matters what you think. It matters how you behave when there's nobody else around. Because out of that, you're building habit. Out of that, that's the real you. So let the real you be transformed. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this thing going around, trans. There's only a few trans that I like. <laughs> I love all people. I like transformation. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I like transfiguration, and we're going to go there next. But let me finish this. Because you did not trust in me, so as to cause me as to be regarded as holy by the people of Israel. You will not bring this community into the land I have given them. Wow. This is the Meribah Spring, where the people of Israel disputed with Adonai, and he was caused to be regarded as holy by them. See, the whole community had to learn that Moses blew it and why he couldn't go in. He, he, had, he was, so I, I, I believe Moses was honest. I do. I, I believe he, was, he shared with the people. Um, we know why Moses, I mean, why Aaron and, and Miriam died. We understand, you know, they rebelled. They had the lepers. They weren't going to enter in. But Moses was a different 
individual. Okay, Moses was going to enter into the promised land until this. Okay, until this. So I want to run over to um, Matthew. And I believe it's 17. I could be wrong. Yeah, 17. Verse 1. This is, there's also another account uh, in Mark and one in Luke. The one in Luke, there's a slight discrepancy. And don't let those little discrepancies, because they could be, uh, it could, it, it, these are men writing accounts of what transpired, okay? Um, so whatever happened and transpired, I, I don't want to go into all of what happened before because in chapter Matthew 17, 1, it says six days later. That's important. Okay, six days later. Yeshua took Kepha, Yaakov, and his brother Yohanan and led them up on a high mountain privately. Remember what I told you? He had, he had all these disciples. He had thousands of people following him. And then there were, we know that there were those that were closer to him. And then we know there were at least 120 that he said. There were 70 that he sent out. There were 12 that he chose. There were other women who followed. Okay, there, there just, there are a lot of people. But out of the 12 that he chose, he even chose further to the three, okay? As they watched, he began to change form. We call this the transfiguration, okay? His face shone like the sun and his clothing became as white as light. Then they looked and they saw Moshe and Eliyahu speaking with him. Hmm. And Kepha, Peter, said to Yeshua, it's good that we were here, Lord. I'll put up three shelters if you want, one for you, one for Moshe, and one for Eliyahu. <laughs> While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them. What does this sound like? A bright cloud, of, yeah. What, what happened? There, there are clouds that come, that came down on, on, around Moses, right? The presence of God and the cloud that, okay. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased, listen to him. When the Talmudim heard this, they were so frightened, they fell down on the ground. But Yeshua came and touched them and said, get up and don't be afraid. So they opened their eyes, they looked up and they saw only Yeshua by himself. So why Moses? And why Eliyahu? Why these two? Why? Because is there not a place where it says, don't conjure up the dead? I'm telling you, they're not dead here. They're not dead. They were very much alive in their time. Moses came first. Eliyahu came first after they weren't in the same same time frame but they were both equally alive in their own time and had this encounter with Yeshua in his earthly time God is outside of time God, God is outside of time mm -hmm. and when he says in Revelation to come up here whenever we see and Paul even talks about it Peter talks about it, the old the prophets all talk about it. I and then I saw and then I was taken up come up here they went to a high place outside of time in the heavenlies with God. Mm -hmm. Moses was on the mountain. We don't know what, apparently a lot transpired. It's probably things we don't even know, I'm sure. Okay? He didn't conjure up the dead. He's the God of the living. They both appeared from their own time mm -hmm. in his time outside of time. Nothing's impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. Okay? Absolutely nothing. So Moses, I think it's very interesting because Moses encountered a government system in Egypt. Moses through Moses, God annihilated the power, the, the power that would have been at that time was Egypt. Egypt was the world power, political power. And God said, uh, not so fast, as my government, and took authority. Annihilated all the false gods and the political system. Okay? 
Eliyahu annihilated the religious system. And if you go into Luke and it says, um, let's see if I can find it real fast. Uh, suddenly in Luke 9 30 suddenly there were two men talking with him Moshe and Eliyahu they appeared in glorious splendor and spoke of his his Yeshua's exodus which he would soon to accomplish in Yerushalayim see there's a little more detail there now don't get confused Luke says eight days Matthew says six okay well I think it's very important six days later that there is a Shabbat, but if it was the eighth day, or, or say it happened on, on Shabbat, okay, well, remember the thousand years is like a, a day? Okay, I, I think Luke might have been on the eighth day. Why didn't he say the first day of the week? Eight days. What happens in, when we get to Sukkot? It's eternity. Yeah, eight, right? Mm -hmm. Eight is a new beginning. Mm -hmm. So, after the millennial reign, we're going to have a mm -hmm. new transfiguration. Mm -hmm. Okay, but during the millennial reign, those things that Yeshua came to do, he's going to set it. We, we pray, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come, your government. Right? And God, God's government, God is both government and religious. Both systems that our world is prevailing. And today, what is really... We have governments that are uniting together worldwide, right? We have government leaders. I hate to say that. Oh, I hate to say that. We have men in power mm -hmm. and women in power all over the world uniting together to establish their politics, mm -hmm. their government. Like the power balance. And they're serving it like the, a religious system. And we know that there are religious aspects to what they are doing. Demonic religious aspects. Power. Okay. Please pray for this movie, Sound of Freedom. I, I really believe with all of my heart that part of exposing Babylon and the whore and the, okay, all of the, the things that are incorrect are very much steeped and tied to trafficking mm -hmm. because it is dark. It is demonic. Yeah. There are things associated to it for all very various many things and when that light is exposed mm -hmm. why do I say that because in Revelation system and it also talks about what's underneath it and it, it, it uses the words bodies and souls of men bodies and souls of men mankind aren't these human bodies and aren't there souls That's why I think that it's tied together. It's always tied together. Mm -hmm. If they are fighting so hard to keep it in the dark and not bring it forth, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that it's, it's tied. Mm -hmm. So pray hard and get ready for change. Get ready for change, mm -hmm. okay? But not to be afraid mm -hmm. because throughout all of scripture, he has always provided. So death, was the subject this week of my focus. I know that sounds really morbid, I'm sorry. But, but death was the thing that grabbed me this week. You're not gonna die until, he's, until you've done what he wants you to do. Why are we so afraid of death? Why are we so afraid of death? Moses, M Moses' life could have gone on a little further into the promised land, but it got cut short. But it was still in, still in God's hands. Mm -hmm. So was Marion's. So was Aaron's. He says, okay, tell Aaron he's going to go up to Mount Hor. It's, it's time for him to pass the baton now. His time is done. Some of us might be told, okay, your time is going to be done. I mean, I, I've heard of people, no, no, my time is short. Um, it's, it's time for me to go home. I, I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. So why are we so, if we're afraid of it, then we need to examine our hearts. Mm -hmm. I don't need to worry about when it's coming. If I've done what he's wanted me to do, right? Mm -hmm. 
I believe with all my heart, my dad died way before his time. But God said, you've done what I wanted you to do. Okay? And I also think, you know, it talks about, you think about this one who dies, but don't you think that God spared him from what was to come? I think God spared my father from a lot of heartache that would have broken his heart. Psalm 57. Psalm 57. Okay? I, I believe had my father lived any longer, he 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 would have he would have been very depressed, very, very down, grieved. very grieved, very grieved mm -hmm. for different things that have gone on in the family. Okay, so look at death differently. Look at death differently because you have an inheritance, right? We have a great inheritance. And he's the God of the living, not the dead. My body might die, but my soul and my spirit is not going to die. Can, can, we, can we get that in our heads? Mm -hmm. This body, this shell, think of the butterfly. See, this is something from my, so this is from my, this was a gift from my father. That caterpillar goes into a cocoon, and when it comes out, there's no resemblance of what used to be there. Same being. Same, same creature, been transformed. His figures change, transfigured, his figures change, his form has changed, okay? So let's get that into our, our beings. So again, what inheritance are you seeking? Because if it's a fleshly one, if it's things of this world, you're going to die with the flesh, and you're going to die with it, and you're going to burn up with it. But if it's his... He's the God of the living. He's the God of the living. Okay? Mm -hmm. Moses and Eliyahu were alive. He did not contradict. He doesn't. He's not a man that he can lie. He doesn't go against his word. He said, do not go and speak to the dead. They were not dead. Mm -hmm. They were very much alive. All right? Mm -hmm. Good? Yeah. All right. That's it. I think. So if God tells you to speak to the rock, take a deep breath. <laughs> take a deep breath. Breathe him in. Exhale you out. And speak to the rock. Things are going to get. Change always is rough. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Change yeah, no, squeezes yeah, like the straights. Like we don't. Yeah. Nobody likes change. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, really, we don't. You do? Oh, God bless you. I want to give, I'm going to be walking right behind you. <laughs> you clear the way. Um, but, but for the most part, we don't. For the most part, we like. I mean, that's, yeah. there, like there are some things that change. Yeah. yeah, we do like. But there are other things that we get comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we know. We know what's expected. We know what we do. Yeah. We understand it. Yeah. I can do this. I know where the stuff is in the store. Yes. I oh, I know. Yeah, you change it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you see what I said? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So get get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Get comfortable with change. Get comfortable with knowing this boy. Okay. Okay. Because we are going to walk by faith in these times. <laughs> not by what you see in the flesh, not by what you hear with your ears. Okay, different. See things in the heavenly realm. Hear things in the heavenly realm. Put your armor on. Read your word. Spend time with him. Morning, noon, and night. Yeah, don't just pray once. You know, forget this. Oh, could you not, Terry? Well, you should have an hour in the morning and then go about your day. Mm -mm, get it. Boker Tov, Abba. Boker Tov. Thank you for this day. Thank you so much for all that you've given us. Then throughout your day, thank you for the... Bless us. Abba, give us a love. You cannot love if you're not going to be obedient. I've said it before and I'm going to keep saying it. If you're not obedient to God, you cannot love. You can't. Because it's not in us. Not that kind of love. Not the kind of love where Moses, where you, they're grumbling and complaining and they're going to lynch him and they're going to do all these things. And he's like, oh God, forgive him. Forgive him, Abba. Yeshua on the cross, who loved me more than I loved myself because I was headed for destruction. God, forgive 
forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't understand, Abba. That's where we need to be today, tomorrow, next week, until, until he returns. Abba, all of these people are on the road to destruction. They're all headed for hell, Abba. Give me the love. What do you want me to do for I gonna, I mean, You're not going to win them over by beating them ahead with the club. You're not going to win them over by judgment. You're not going to win them over by telling them, you should do it like this. You know what? Shut your mouth and let God tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. You love them. If, if they're hearing you, they're not hearing God. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Abba, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Give us your heart. Give us your grace and your peace. You tell us that you adore us. You tell us that we are your, we are precious in your sight. And yet we do, we don't pass that on to others. Change us, Abba. Transform us. And let us walk in that faith and walk where you want us to go. Thank you and we praise you, Abba. Yerek Kadanai Vieshmracha Yayer Adanai Panavalacha Vihunacha Yesay Adanai Panavalacha Vihunacha Vieshlam ha shalom. Vieshlam ha shalom. Let me read it to you. May Hashem Adonai, the eternal existing one, adore you, guard you, watch over you, protect you, save you. May He celebrate you treasure you. You know you're, you're his own unique treasure. May he cause the light of his presence to shine on you. And may his presence be illuminated in you. May you forgive all your offenses and impart unmerited, unmerited. You're no better than anybody else, Sherry. Adoration, favor, mercy, and consideration. He considers me. May his presence within you and toward you be set and fixed, firmly established, carrying you, <coughs> sustaining you, supporting, supporting you, pardoning you. May he ordain and establish and fix and determine complete soundness, safety through whatever you go through, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, quiet, tranquility, contentment, and above all, friendship.